Hi there. This is a follow-up video for the uh, searchable drop-down list uh, video that I created a few months ago. In that video, basically we took, um, rather than using just an old uh, drop-down list, which using data validation, we improved that slightly um, by having a list which rather than just giving you the straightforward drop-down list, if you typed into the cell, for example if I type in tiger, and then use the drop-down list, it would automatically filter out the results and just give you the ones that you were interested in. So if I go back in here and type in John, it gives me a totally different list. So if you haven't seen that video, uh, this one probably won't make any sense. Um, so just down towards the bottom here, hopefully there should be a link and you can go and watch that video if you haven't already seen it. <clears throat> so quite a few people uh, were kind enough to comment on the video and uh, a few of the comments mentioned that whilst this was good what they really needed was uh, this technique to cover multiple cells so imagine if you had a whole column that you wanted someone to fill in and then you wanted to be able to use this technique let's say for example over the whole load of these yellow cells here so every single one of these would have a drop down list and you'd be able to use that searchable technique in there and I was uh, scratching my head thinking, oh, wow, I, I, I've got no idea how I'm going to be able to do this. And, uh, and this is what I love about YouTube. <laughs> then another person, a, a guy called uh, Tim Kachansky, who's obviously some kind of Excel ninja, came up with a fantastic solution um, and solved the problem, which is, uh, which is great and, and, and taught me a new function as well. So I'm going to share that uh, Tim solution with you now. I've changed it slightly. Um, I hope you don't mind, Tim. But, and, uh, and this is going to be able to use the similar technique, but over a whole load of cells. The technique that Tim came up with it uses a function called cell. So I'll just explain a little bit how it works. So equals cell. The cell function is an inf information function. Basically, it tells you some information about a particular cell. So if I wanted to know, uh, well, most straightforwardly, the address of a particular cell, which cell am I interested in? I'll say um, B10. And it tells me, not surprisingly, that the, the address of cell B10 is B10. And he puts it uh, with using the absolute reference. If I wanted to, I could change this and ask for the contents of cell B10. There's nothing in B10 at the moment, but if I type something in there, then it will reflect whatever's in there. And that's really useful, and there's all kinds of things that you can ask for here you can ask for the, the the file name or the format or the row or loads of different things and that's brilliant what's interesting about this if I just go back to saying the contents here is that if I get rid of the second argument which you'll notice is not mandatory then it does something slightly different what it then gives you is the contents of the last cell you edited now at the moment, the last cell we edited was B6, and the formula's in B6, so it gives us a circular reference, but that's okay. But now, watch what happens now. If I type in something here, it's going to record W. If I record something else over here, it changes to whatever the cell last time was um, using. Now, this is really, really useful. Now, what's interesting in terms of this as far as we're concerned, is that it doesn't reflect immediately as I type it, it's only when the screen is refreshed, and this is um, what Tim was talking about when he said he needed to double-click the cell. But there are a few things that refresh the screen. One is obviously entering the information in, uh, another one is pressing F9, and another one is using data validation. So this is fantastic. What this means is we can replace this cell here, D2, which you remember this cell or in fact all of these cells here were based on look, doing a search on cell D2. So if in D2, instead of having the drop down, we put the equals cell. Oops. Can't spell cell. And then we put the contents of that in there. We leave off the reference argument. It'll give us a, a warning about circular reference. That's okay. We can ignore that because usually we won't be using it. And now if we type something in here and then enter it, this will reflect to give me a W. And I'll, if I, I'll show you a better example. If I type in here and enter that information, this automatically changes, which changes our drop-down list area. So if I now use data validation on all of these cells here, Allow for 
from a list. I'm just being a bit lazy here and just using this list here. I know we should really be using the offset command as we did last time, but just to save a little bit of time, we'll just use that basic list. It now means that wherever I type in here, use the drop down list, it'll just change the drop down list here because this changes, this changes. And I can choose one of the things from the list. And this will work all the way down in all of these cells here. And the reason it works, incidentally, is because if I type something in, then use the data validation drop, that refreshes the data, which changes this cell, which changes these cells over at the side. So the problem with this one now is it only works if you put something into the cell before you actually use the drop down, because otherwise the drop down doesn't know what you're looking for. Um, so you might want to just change this ever so slightly, change the date validation, input message, So you could make it a little bit more uh, clear what the user needs to do before they use this. And then hopefully they'll be able to find what it is that they're looking for on the list. Hope that's been uh, useful. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks again, Tim, for your fantastic solution. And uh, I'll see you again soon.